by giving you a quiz, all right? And that's, let's see what you've learned so far. All right, I wasn't here yesterday, but I gleaned a lot of information from the panel talk earlier. And I'm gonna switch, I, while I'm here, I'm just gonna tell you this, I'm presenting this with an iPad app called Explain Everything. And literally, it does explain everything. This is a tool that you might want to use if you're ever thinking of moving to just carrying a little tablet around with you, um, because it's really easy to work with. And I'll explain some of that in a moment. So I'm going to switch between that and a couple other things. Uh, ooh, look what I did. How interesting. Guided access. Does anybody know what guided access is? OK, well, we won't talk about that today if you want to know. OK, but I'm going to give you this quiz, and it's on. I just learned about this yesterday at an e-learning uh, camp, boot camp that I was at for the week. So I'd like you to go to kahoot.it, K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. Easiest thing in the world to create a little quiz or survey, and it's fun because you're going to compete against one another for a prize. Who doesn't want a prize? Guess what the prize is? It's money. There is money involved. OK. So if you sign in, what you should do is follow the directions on kahoot.it. I think you put in just game pin. Oh, we need a game pin. Hold on. See. I've, this, I've never even used this. I learned it yesterday. Well, what's the worst that can happen? I will fuck it up. OK? So OK, hold on. Look, I'm showing you what's happening. You're learning with me. Apparently, there's a lot of things I have to click into. All right, here you go. Ready to join? And they're going to give me a pin connecting. They're going to give us a pin. And you put this pin in, and they play music. You don't have to register. You don't have to do much of anything. That's the beauty of this. It's simple. And ooh, look, we have eight players so far. I have 11 players. Remember, there's money. Whatever you want. Well, you can put whatever you want, but if you put something that's inappropriate, it will change it. My colleague put in butt cheeks yesterday, and it changed it to breaks. Whatever, I didn't even think butt cheeks was that offensive. Okay, 27 players, 29. Is anybody else trying to get in still? Okay, because it's timed. Okay, no pressure, all right, no pressure. Holy cow, 35 players. OK, there's going to be four questions. Okay. There's going to be four questions. You need to watch the screen. OK, the question will be here. And it will show four answers that have a particular shape associated with it, a shape and a color. Let's say a green triangle. If the green triangle is correct, you're going to hit the green triangle on your screen. Does that sound simple? It wasn't so simple, OK? <laughs> OK, I'm going. 39, 40. How many, how many can we get? 42. So the game itself says it can hold up to 1,000 players. I teach in a large classroom uh, of 125 to 150, so this is great for me. OK, so I'm going to hit the Start Now button. OK, are you ready? Well, too bad, too slow, you're not going to make money. OK, question number one. How can you deliver the content you need when you are increasing in-class activities? Don't bother. Put it all online. Create new courses or flip the classroom. OK, now remember, this is all about speed because really, oh, oh my god. Ding. OK, time's up. Look, it gives you immediate feedback on the results. So the correct answer was flip the classroom. 38 people got it correct. Give yourselves a hand. OK. 
Okay. You two are in trouble. Don't bother? Okay. <laughs> Fortunately, it's all good. So how do you know who got it the fastest? It's going to tell you. Chris A is in the lead with Dirt Doctor. Where's Dirt Doctor? Dirt Doctor, I love it. Okay, so are you ready for the next one? All right, here we go. Collaborative learning, such as giving exams that are taken in groups, means students learn less, students cheat more, more work for faculty, students learn from one another. Your time is going, 11, 8, 7, tick, tick, tick. Time is up. Woohoo! All right, that's very good. 46 people got that correct. This was a fat finger. I feel confident of that, right? You just picked one really quickly. So, let's see. And they're all, is the green always the answer? No. No, I picked which ones were the answer. Ah, uh, could I give the pin again? No. Sorry. So it doesn't show on my screen. So that's something you should know. It's, that's a, probably a little technical glitch you might want to be aware of. Okay, so Dirt Doctor is now in the lead. Way to go. Jen, catapulted above whoever that second, Chris A. Chris A, you're falling off. Okay, your timing? Okay. So you don't read. Reading takes too long. Okay. All right, here we go with the next one. TJ, you ready? Okay. OER refers to which of the following? Oh my God, it takes forever. Open-ended research, open educational resources, one easy read and no idea. Now, TJ, if you get this one wrong, you're out. Okay. I was trying to come up with OER words, but woohoo, 45 people got that correct. Do you see how you might use this in a classroom? Yeah. This is very easy. You guys are competitive. You don't know that you're competitive until you start doing this. Who do you think's winning? Is Dirt Doctor still in the lead? Dirt Doctor! Not by much. Well, crap. Okay. Jen saved her spot there. Okay, we still have some people. I mean, we have 42 people in here that are below, but this is not a big difference. This is all timing. Okay, last question. This is for the big money. No whammy, no whammy. Oh, come on. Doesn't recognize me as a person. How do you get your students to be passionate about their learning? <laughs> Read off your slides in class. Jump up and down in class. Model your enthusiasm in your teaching or give students answers for exams. I don't know. Okay, that was fast. You guys are very fast. Okay. God, 20 seconds takes too long. Oh, and I need to hit the next button. Oops, so 43 of you got that right. Woohoo! Okay. Where is Jen? Who's Jen? Jen? Hold on, I gotta get the money out of my pocket here. Did you take the money out of my pocket when I was putting this in here? Where'd my money? Oh, there it is. It's way over, it's way over here. Oh, watch out. Here you go. Why not? You gotta come and get it. Absolutely, while you're up here, while you're up here, why don't we have you do something else? Yes, you're here. But you're here, and you're smart. Come on, come on up here. Come on. Okay, it's, this is gonna be so easy, you won't even believe it. And I'm gonna give you a dollar. Come on. Okay, I teach biology, right? And I am passionate about how I teach. Okay. Okay, I want, hold on, you hold this for one second. Okay. I brought hands-on materials. Okay. You're a physiologist. This is perfect. Know, okay, here, you hold these, okay? Both. 
put the doll, put here. Okay. We're, we're all adults here. We understood that. Did you make so, this? I did not make that. This is, this is vegetable oil. Okay. I, I do a lot of things at home, but I don't make vegetable oil. So, in my biology class, one of the things I like to do is get back to just simple hands-on. Okay, what happens when you put a little bit of this water mm -hmm. in with a little bit of this oil? <coughs> Go ahead. No, no, more than that. Yeah, do like half. So, when I'm teaching this, right, nobody does this anymore. Okay, nobody does anything in the classroom. We don't want to carry shit to our rooms. Yeah. Okay, now. So, what happens if you shake that? Okay, that's great. Stop. <laughs> okay, we don't want it all over the place. What do you see? Emulsification. Oh my God, she's, wait. Emulsification. She's using technical ter <laughs> jargon. Okay, what would my students say when they looked at that? Um, it's mixed up, yeah. Mixed up, really? Is it really mixed up? Do you want me to shake Can you see? No, I don't want you to shake harder. Can it be actually mixed? Suspended? Equally? Suspended. That's very good. It's a, it's a huge difference. Okay, and this is what makes you a human being or a living being is the simple fact that these separate automatically. So the difference between us being alive and not being alive is the fact that oils and lipids separate from water. Simple, very simple. Thank you so much for playing the game. Okay, you can't get any more old school than that, right? That's bringing something into class. They still don't understand what the hell I'm talking about. But then I can give them a traditional boring lecture where they're poking their eyes out, right? So, Let's go back. This is what our students look like often. I don't blame them. They work sometimes 20 to 40 hours a week, right? They're taking a ton of classes. A lot of our students come from very traditional families where they're part of the income for the family. And we, we need to make ourselves more engaging. I've had a lot of professors that sucked. I don't know about you. Okay? And I definitely get a lot of hmm, some negative comments on rate my professor. But n never has anybody said I'm boring. Okay? All right. What we want to do is we want to replace the sage on the stage, which obviously here, this is a great, I love this picture. Look at these students, they, they all look exactly the same, they're, they're, they're pieces of paper all the same, and there I am, standing in the front, spouting information. That's not me, okay. But that's what I like to think. And we want to switch it to something where we're actually having hands-on interactions, guiding the students to learn the information from what they're doing. And that's hard. I don't know about you guys, but some days I'm just like, what am I going to do today? All right? And this is what we've come to. We've come to, even in my large lecture rooms, they don't have to sit facing front, not collaborating with one another. They can talk with one another. They can teach one another. And I'm sure that, um, the, uh, who was the, the speaker from yesterday that did flipped? Flip, Julie? So Julie came out of Eric Mazur's lab, and he was all about this collaborative learning. And so if we can get our students helping one another, they trust that, each other more than they trust us. So that's what we're shooting for. If you think about this, that's the goal. How do we get there? Well, there's lots of different ways. Okay, this is one way. Okay, I apologize. I'm going to sing. Oops, sorry, we got to start at the beginning. This is a love song, by the way. <laughs> and you too can sing along if you can figure out the words. They'll be on the screen. It is karaoke, why not? <laughs>
just a little atom of chlorine, valence minus one. <laughs> Swimming through the sea, just digging, having fun. I really can't sing. She's not worried about the shape or size of her outside shell. It's fun to ionize just a little atom of CL with an unfilled shell. We're looking for that one. Somewhere in this sea. With enough electrons in his outer shell for but an extra one. I can't even remember the words. Oh, I feel like I'm in Vegas. Somewhere in this deep blue sea is a negative for my extra energy. Somewhere in this foam, a positive will find a home. An unsuspecting chlorine felt a magnetic pull. She looked down and her outside shell was full. Sodium cried, what a gaspy my bride. And I'll change your name from chlorine to chloride. See evaporates clouds for the rain and snow. God, I need to work out. Leaving a chemical compound in the absence of H2O. Crystals that wash upon the shore were happy once. If you never thought before, think of the love that you eat when you salt your meat. I love meat. So I love when you eat salt your meat. Okay. That was painful, yes? Yay! <laughs> okay. That, that's actually a real song that was written by some folk artists from Canada. And I was flipping through PBS, this was 20 years ago, and I just happened to come upon that and I said, oh, there's. That's a stunted biologist, for sure. They were a biology major, and then they found out they could sing, and they made money doing that. So <laughs> can you imagine they would give up biology? So I do that in class to show them that you can make a complete and total idiot of yourself in a learning way. You can do that. You can learn biology. That was all chemistry, by the way. But you can also have your students do this. So this is all generated by students in an immunology class. It's and we play this in class, and I get up and dance. Notice I can't dance either. And I'm going to tell you now, I got one person here. She's got a great voice. Totally helps out. You get the idea. So this was all generated by the student. I had nothing to do with this. At the beginning of the semester, just as they would get a term paper, they got a project, a creative project. Do anything you want. Create a song. Create a dance. Create other materials that teach somebody something about what we've learned in class. It's turned out that I've gotten some amazing, amazing projects out of this. The students will never forget this. This is something they will go to their grave with. Okay? So these two young women, and I think it's, one of, I think it's her sister, sadly got sucked into that. Um, you know, they're going to understand the complement pathway in immunology, which nobody wants to know, but they do it in song. So there's lots of things you can do to get your students engaged. I love gamification, okay? People think gamification is poo-poo, okay? Uh, there's, you're all adults, and you wanted to win that game, okay? <laughs> there's nobody that doesn't want to win, okay? If you give them an opportunity not only to play games, but to make games, okay? I've given you some resources on the next pages where you can find a lot of this information. Um, this is... Jeopardy Labs, I, I usually play a Jeopardy game with, with a group like this, but I decided to, I tried the Kahoot this time. Uh, Jeopardy is great. Everybody loves Jeopardy. If you want to do it as a review, great. If you want the students to make a review, 
have them make the questions, have them make the answers. Uh, Answer Garden is a new tool that's out that does word clouds. Socrative, does anybody know any of, uh, anybody use Socrative? Okay, it's, it's nice, it gives you the same kind of thing that Kahoot did, but a little more powerful. Uh, Poll Everywhere, anybody use Poll Everywhere? These are all freely available to you. The limitations are the number of students you can use them with. So Poll Everywhere used to be 50, it, it went down to 30 just recently. So it's not very good for me in my large classroom, although I can get a slice of the pie, I can do a question, and 30, 30 of the answers will show up. It'll be the 30 fastest people, <laughs> okay, which maybe not is a representative slice, but I can say whatever question and, oh, you all got it wrong. Clearly, I need to do something differently, right? It's all about what am I doing to get the information to you, not what they're doing wrong. So these are all tools that you can use. Um, I think I was going to do an answer garden with you if you'd like to try. You'd like to try? Okay, we'll go to, let's see, where is answer garden? Here is answer garden. If you want to create your own PowerPoint games and play them, these are sites that you can get the download for that. The most useful game is Jeopardy. Uh, another one that is not even up there is Bingo. So Bingo, if you create a bingo, the students created a Bingo game in immunology, and each of the letters, they all, they had an answer. And so then the, what was, instead of pulling numbers out, they asked a question. And so they had a list of questions, and if you got whatever, those answers in a row, we checked your answers to make sure you weren't just messing up. So there's a lot of ways to do this, but the PowerPoint for Jeopardy works fabulously. There's one for who's a millionaire. The one I really want to work doesn't work, which is Family Feud. Okay, it's impossible to figure it out. If it takes more than five minutes, yeah. The, the, it'll be up on, you want me to go back? Wait, do you want me to say that again? I heard that. We, we didn't get it. Yes, sir. Take a picture. That's what the students all do, right? I see, see, we got, students are all about, wait, let me take a picture of that. That's why we have phones now. Oh, there's a camera out. Oh, 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 I'm not going anywhere. So, oh my God, just turn it around. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that you're gonna find out is that they wanna play games all the time. And you can't play games all the time. You, you got to do some content delivery. And how do you make that happen in a meaningful way? Well, I think we'll skip that. Uh, what we've done in our classes with the tablet, all the students are required to purchase a tablet, an iPad. And we've made it uh, the cost neutral by lowering costs elsewhere. So a lot of faculty have generated their own uh, course materials. So they've made their own e-books, which they're offering for free. The lab notebooks have now been modified to be free to the students. So, and we have the, the tablet initiative in five courses that are core courses for biology majors. So nobody can get out without doing five courses. In those five courses, they'll save the $250 or more, right? I got a refurbished iPad for $250. Totally works fine. Okay. Don't buy new, buy refurbished. Okay, I'm a little Apple person. <laughs> okay, I'm insane. I have everything Apple. You don't need to buy it new. But we have the students in class, right? We give them our, our PowerPoints or our PDFs, and we have them annotate the slides. So I don't have to put every word on a slide. These are called skeleton notes. I never called them skeleton notes. But in this particular app, this app that I'm projecting with, it's called Explain Everything. And you can't see it on the top left-hand side, I think. There's a, there's a pen, and I can change the size of the color, whatever, let's say a blue. So if I give them uh, skeleton notes, what are the concerns about providing notes to students? Why do you not want to give them notes prior to them being in class. Does anybody know why? They won't come. That's the number one. 
Okay, so attendance. Oh yeah, I write really well too, huh? Okay, it, it's okay, they're writing it on, on their own. What else is a concern? They'll, that's very good, they won't pay attention. They don't learn anything, yes. Okay, look, isn't that good? You can't read a word I wrote. But <clears throat> in class, it doesn't matter. They should be writing their own notes, and I'm not giving them everything. I'm, I'm not spoon feeding them. Okay. What's good about providing these? And I gave you one. So one of these is, if you're doing something really technical with formulas, with, with calculations, you can give them that information in a very detailed way and know that they don't fuck it up. <laughs> it's, they're going to get the correct material. When they take notes by themselves, you don't know that they're getting the correct material. They wrote it down wrong. But that's what you said. I'm pretty sure I never said that <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right? Have you ever had a student tell you? Yeah. You said that. Yeah. Not even in my wildest dream did I say that. OK? What else? What, why else would it be good to do skeleton notes? Write it, remember it. So by tying the two together, by putting the kinesthetic uh, features of moving your hand, it actually links it together in the brain. There's two things that happen. You're, you're using more than one neuron, and those neurons become linked. Okay? This, is, this is science, people. Okay? You can't argue with science. Uh, what else? What else? It's organized. You know what? They're paying attention in class now. They're responsible for their learning. Yes, ma'am. You don't frown at me as a teacher. You don't like to read, to read the screen. Or oh my God! I never. Yeah, I don't. I hate reading the screen. That's just horrible, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you sat through those, and you really were sitting there with your pen, going <laughs> just to try and stay awake. Okay. I don't need somebody to read for me. This. When I do this, this is all just for them. I could talk for an hour, and I don't even have to change slides. So yeah, absolutely. So the idea is we're making them be responsible for their learning. OK? The other thing we've gone to is, which I think Cafe Learn, I don't know. OK, I haven't had an opportunity to work with it yet. But this is, we have Moodle as our learning management system, and every day, in class, I build in, notice this is, oh god, that's coming soon, no, right? Every day, I have three uploads. So in class, students are doing something, we do activities, and they have to upload it to the learning management system. So they get credit for being a button in the seat, which I like their butts to be in the seat. Sometimes I grade them, sometimes I don't grade them, OK? And whether they do it and get a good grade or not, they're still getting credit for doing it. So what that means is you're giving them practice in class, and you can, the, for the things that really matter, I do grade it. With 125 students, sometimes it's painful. For Moodle, the only thing they can upload is a JPEG. And on an iPad, it's really easy. You hit two buttons, and it, it takes a picture. And then they just upload that on the, on the learning management system. Uh, you'll also notice that. There's a quiz. Every day there's a quiz. Has anybody read the book, Make It Stick? You read it? What'd you think? Oh, Best book ever. If you haven't read it, it's $9.99 on Amazon. It's about the science of learning, how students learn, right? How did we learn in elementary school? You did the multiplication tables over and over and over. Rote learning. Doesn't work. <coughs> Yay. <laughs> okay, we expect students to sit and study and study and study, and they're not getting the right way to do it, and it's because we haven't modeled it. So one of the things they suggest is very early and often give them feedback. And since today we were talking about collaborative learning, my quizzes, I, I started out counting them 10% for my class. No, 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 they didn't care. They were like, I'll throw away 10% of my score. I don't care. So I made it 30%. Oh, they studied every day. <laughs> I came into class. They were 
communicating with one another. What about this? What about that? What about this? It makes a difference. Okay? They're studying every day. That is shocking. And it might be every other day. Okay? I only see them every other day. But that's way more than what they normally do. They normally wait till the end of the semester and or the end of the right before the exam and cram it in. So I highly recommend this. Okay? And now I'm going to make it collaborative. Why not let them take it together? I don't care how they get it. I want them to get it. The outcome is that they learn it. And if they can learn it from their neighbor who's sitting next to them, not just the answer, but let's have a discussion about it, then why not? So lots of things you can do. Okay. Notice this didn't work out perfectly. This is, this is last minute PowerPoint. Okay. Let's say I want to teach them a concept in class. Well, I might teach them this concept. Does everybody know how genetics works? Right? Mom and dad. You get genes from mom and dad. Half from mom, half from dad. Okay? As long as you don't have anything really terrible, you'll be fine. And that's because usually one allele, the dominant allele, can make up for a bad, another bad allele. So you get right, female gametes, male gametes. This is eggs and sperm for those of us who just need to boil it down to nothing. Okay. <laughs> When the egg and sperm come together, there's choices. So an egg is only going to have, so your mother has these genes, A and A, A and little a, because she got one from mom and one from her dad. Well, she can only pass one of those to you. So she might pass the, the big A, or she might pass the little a. Dad's going to do the same thing. Let's say he's got a big A and a little a. Blah, 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 okay? So the choices at the end are, one big A, big A, two big A, little A's, one little A, little A. So that's, that's called a monohybrid cross. Students should know this. They should know the ratios that you get. And A, if it's a dominant phenotype, okay, means that these three will look the same because they all have the dominant phenotype. This is a recessive phenotype. The only way you get recessive is if you have two little recessives. I have, two brother, I have a brother and a sister that are albino. So white hair, pink eyes, legally blind. And so mom and dad, are neither are albino, which means they both carry the gene. Okay, That means that every time they got busy, they had a one in four chance of having a baby that's little a, little a. Okay, Everybody's clear, yes? It's so simple. <laughs> Biology really is simple. Uh, well, now I make them do it. Okay? We don't do this enough in our classes. We don't help them. And literally, right, we just expect them, to, from what I just did, to remember it. So now we model this for them. Oh my god, what does this mean? Okay, So let's say this is dad. So this is dad, and this is mom. Doesn't matter where you go, but this means that dad can give a big A or a big A. Mom can give a big A or a little a. This is called a Punnett square, for those of you who are just nerding it up out there. Okay. And we do it in class. And this would be something that they could then upload on their Moodle site, and they get points for this. Okay, very simple. Okay, do you st they would take an image of this, so if I hold down of this, this is a problem that they've done in class. Take a picture of it. We did it together. My God, how hard is it? Okay, take a picture and show me you did it. Okay, here. Don't stop there. Give them another one. They need the practice and the feedback. They need to do it. And we stop doing that. Somewhere along the line, we stop actually having them do this kind of thing. So this all takes a lot of time out of your class, yes? Because now I can't get through content. So what do you do? Well, flipping the classroom, what does flipping the classroom really mean? Anybody know? Has anybody flipped?
the easy stuff like reading home, interesting, the easy stuff like reading means they won't do it, right? So, um, and do you do that before class or after class? Te technically, flipping is beforehand. You give them the information outside of class, and then you have them come to class, and you reinforce what it is that they've done. Okay. So we've, we've done a little bit of that, but I think more than anything, we've done something differently, which a member of our IT team has cleverly called flopping the class. Okay. We do flipping and flopping now. And flopping is the fact that I didn't get through all the material today. So what do I do? I go to my office, and I give them the rest of the material. I do a lecture capture in my office, and I send that to them, and then we, it's, it's the flop, but then we have to basically talk about it the next day. Not all the gory details, but it's really easy to do this. This particular app allows me to record myself. This app is explain everything. It costs $2.99. Okay. It's not Android. Oh. You're out, man. That's it. That might not be true. Somebody just told me. I take it back. Would you look it up? There's probably generic versions for Android. They're always good. Nope. It's the best app that ever happened. <laughs> Explain everything. And the reason it's the best app that ever happened, I'm talking, right? What happens? Students ask me questions. Well, what did we used to do with PowerPoints? Well, we just stood here and talked. Okay, and they don't get it. Well, down here, I should just do it up here. See that little plus on the bottom? I just add a slide. Well, if I, now I have a new slide and we could talk about what it is. So is it Android? Hmm, I don't know. So explain everything. Yay! So the guy that made it, um, one of my friends, the academic technology vice president at CSUN met him, and she sent me a picture. She's hold, you know, hugging him, and I'm so jealous because I emailed him the first week I found it, and I said, this is the best thing ever. And he immediately responded to me, which I didn't expect any app developer to respond to me. I had asked if they could do something. He says, wait for the next version, it's in it. So they're very responsive to what we want. As educators, they want to make us happy. Because I asked my students to buy this. I did have one student complain. Okay, One student in, I don't know, out of thousands. I said, it's a half a latte. Please, come on, $2.99. So he wanted reimbursement for it. <laughs> no. Okay. There are other ways to flip your classroom, so let me, I'm just gonna record this. So now I'm recording, and I can do this in class. So how many of you have lecture capture available in your classroom? Okay, a handful, not very many. You can lecture capture yourself in your classroom. You don't need lecture capture anymore, okay? You, I, if you're like me, I like to walk back and forth, and I don't have a microphone, and I, it doesn't matter. I'm very loud. And the students really appreciate having the ability to rewind what I've said and go back. It's by far the number one thing that students want is lecture capture. So how do I deliver that? Well, I do the whole lecture capture and over here, this little handy dandy film thing allows me to upload it to YouTube. If you don't have your own YouTube, you should. Okay, you all need your own YouTube because there's tons of things you can deliver outside of the class to students. Tutorials on how to do a Punnett square. They need it. Okay, you can make them public. You never want to make anything private on YouTube. So your choices are private, unlisted, and public. If you make it private, nobody can see it, including you. <laughs> ever. <laughs> it's the stupidest setting I've ever seen. Okay, unlisted means the only people who have that link can view it, and public means anybody can see it in the whole world. I have followers in India. Yeah, I don't know what the hell they're doing watching me. 
But apparently, maybe they're amused by me. <laughs> they're like, look at that crazy one. Okay, we, we, um, so I do almost everything with Explain Everything. We also have Echo 360, which is part of our learning management. Uh, no, this was actually purchased by the students through campus quality fee. Uh, and another thing that the, the campus has is Camtasia. Does anybody use Camtasia? Yeah, it's all the same. So I, some campuses have a lot of technology. Some campuses don't. If you're on one of those campuses that don't, let's get it to you. You need it. These are the tools that we use today. All right. So I just wanted to show you another feature. So this is the, my YouTube page, and I just took off some of these. You can't see anything. So I can very easily make it really big. All right. Look at how many views. I am famous. <laughs> 6,609 views. I made this public. It's a, it's a little talk I did about insulin and how insulin works. I do a whole little spiel on insulin and, and GLUT4, which is the receptor for it. Okay, here's another one. This is something I made. This is an animation I made. Okay, not bad, 646 views. That was smaller. Uh, uh, yes. And then, look, even this, endos exocytosis. How dry is that? <sighs> 653 views. My students are really desperate. Okay, they need to see it more than once. You really want to see one of these. Okay. Oh, this could be nasty. Where is it? So, no, on Explain Everything, you can't actually put a link. You can put the link, but it doesn't work very well, so I recommend just hooking out to, to YouTube. This is my YouTube channel. Whoa, you're not seeing the same thing I am. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So this is a video that the students made for um, the immunology project. Uh, and I played it earlier, so I guess it's just linking back to that. Uh, let's find the one. Here, I'll find something that's just really freaking fabulous. Genetic code. This was 25 minutes of really... Okay, so you get the idea, right? I'm not nearly as fun when I do this in my office as I am in class. And yes, it might be painful for them to watch it, but some of them actually do prefer this. They say they don't like all the joking around, and they find it distracting. You cannot make everybody happy, okay? Uh, and I've, I get called into the principal's office every semester. That's the chair. I'm the associate chair, which is really funny, because <laughs> student complaints are supposed to come to me, but they usually come to the office and they say, but it's about Dr. Stein. <laughs> so I get in trouble every semester because oh, I'm not doing what they want. That's OK. So you can't please all of the people all the time. So whoops. Oh, no. Oh my God, do I want to discard it? No, let's open it. All right, so let's just finish this up. Am I done with my time? Is it, we're done? Yes. Oh, you don't want to see the same thing again. Okay, so YouTube. So let me just finish real quick. You, what you can do is really now, it's changed our pedagogy. Having the ability to actually interact with students in the classroom, in my big classes, I never used to talk to the students. I now go and I'll sit down, you know, it's rows of seats, and somebody will say, I don't understand, and I go sit down, and then all of, it's like that E.F. Hutton commercial, all of a sudden, everybody's listening to what I'm talking about in this little group. And they can then share it with one another, and they share it with another group of students. So it has changed, this is my colleague, Jeannie Robertson, I threw her under the bus the first semester with the I iPad and said, here, why don't you teach it? So, <laughs> nice of me, right? Uh, we, we really have been able to change the way we interact with students and give the students an opportunity. This last part is all of these 
all these learning tools. Okay, who doesn't love a stuffed animal? Okay, this is a stuffed T cell. Okay, it says T right on it. These are actually receptors and they have labels on them. I'll read them to you. Epsilon, delta, alpha, beta, gamma, epsilon. So it's actually anatomically correct. Okay. Um, it has on the back this little red area called a C-SMAC, which is the central <laughs> super, supramolecular activation complex, and the P-SMAC, which is the peripheral super, supramolecular activation complex. I didn't bring the other half. The other half is a dendritic cell. The two cells interact with one another. Okay, so this student got an A, yes? yes? Okay, this is a stuffed toy. I can tell they learned. I can, right, just as TJ, were you saying? You don't need to have a, an exam. I get it, the student knows what's going on. So you can do the same thing. Okay, this, one, this one's another good one. This is a little, the immunotimes. Natural killer cell saves the day. Okay, and they have, they, it's a little, newspaper where they have, they made their own cartoon, they made their own Sudoku, they made their own cells, they did a word search, they did everything. How much fun is that? They make it fun every day. I don't know about you, but if I'm not having fun, I know they're not having fun. Okay, so you have fun, you model for them what you want them to learn. It's more important than anything we do. I think the Cafe Learn is a great tool to get all of this in one place. I'm very interested to see how the development goes and I, I'm hoping that I can work with you. So I want to thank you for inviting me and thank you for your attention. You guys have a great day and if you need me, let me know.